What's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? Dude, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, who all we get in here? I'm Howard Mascher. I'm the lead singer. Hey, I'm Andrew. I'm the drummer. Uh, I'm Zach. I uh, play guitar and do some vocals. Awesome. Uh, we've got our bassist and uh, our other guitarist coming in. We were just in another Zoom meeting, so we just jumped off of that and jumped into this one. Uh, no worries, sir. Looks like we've got um, one more joining I, in. I can't. Uh, I was kind of this monster. What's that? Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, did, I think I reached out to you via Facebook just cause I wasn't, um, sure on the timing of like the, the links we hadn't heard back from Tiffany until just now. So, uh, if you get a Facebook message from me, that's, it's about this meeting. <laughs> so, uh, no worries about that. So it looks like we have everybody in here. Yep. That's all of us. All right. Awesome. So want to thank you here for joining us here at Squatch and Pit. And of course today. We are joined with Cotter. Now, Cotter began as an acoustic duo in the summer of 2019 after five years of music collaboration between Howard and Zach. You have since added Kyle, Andrew, and Ethan to make yourself a five piece. Can you give some insight to how Cotter was formed and where the inspiration came from for both the name and getting together to create the band. Zach, either you or me. Yeah, you, you go for it, Howard. You, you, you were the brains behind this. Um, so Cotter started, uh, Zach and I have been collaborating on music forever, like the, the, um, the bio says, but I was always the one to drop out because I was always doing something. This time around, something pretty pretty hard happened in my life and i like a few things actually and i i didn't have any outlet i was like i need to do i need to do it this time i need i need to give everything i i can into this and at first he didn't understandably believe that i was uh serious about it and then we worked on a few tracks really got tracks down and then started writing newer uh more more personal songs and at that point you know, we, we figured it's time to go full band. And I already knew Ethan through, he's been my best friend forever, but luckily through posts, we met Kyle and Andrew and those two guys have turned into two of my best friends. And it's just, it's, it, it's all history from there. But the name comes from a friend of mine, unfortunately, um, that lost her battle with depression. And I try to, I guess, espouse in everything that we do that you're not alone and that these feelings that you have, not to say that they're not unique, but other people have felt them and we've gotten through them and you have support because I don't ever want to see that happen again. So that's the short and long of it, I suppose. I can definitely understand that one, two make sure that somebody that you absolutely love and that has kind of given you aspiration, you know, it, it brings you to moving forward with your goals and your dreams. Yeah. Yeah. It means a lot. And it's something that I, I, I remind myself of often where it helps me find my center where it's like, this isn't, this isn't your name, just your name on this. Remember what you're carrying. So you know. I love it. Definitely love it. Now, you guys are an emo, pop punk, power pop band hailing from Columbus, Ohio. Now, this particular state, which we all know is for lovers, is no stranger to music of the, emo of the emotional persuasion. Who do you feel are some of your biggest influences musically? including any that may be a surprise to somebody and maybe any that are not so much musically uh, like directly musically related. Um, I'd say for, for me, like my biggest influences, like as a songwriter, 
uh, and what got me into music, um, which may be more of a surprise because we are kind of like that pump, pop punk emo style. Um, Third Eye Blind has probably been my biggest influence musically. Um, you know, I, I remember I was in the sixth grade when I got their, uh, their self-titled album and I, I mm-hmm. took it home and just put it, put it on my CD player, followed along with the lyric book from start to finish. And by the, uh, by the time that that was over, I'm just like, I just started over and did it again. Like the, everything in that album just hit me so hard. I'm like, I, I gotta learn these songs. Like I gotta, mm-hmm. I want to learn to play guitar. I want to be a musician. And, um, you know, even, you know, some of that influence actually comes into, um, you know, guitar wise, you know, the guys in, in Third Eye Blind specifically, uh, Kevin Cadigan and Tony Fredinelli, like their, their style has been a huge influence on me. And they were really big in like popularizing, um, playing with like different, like alternative tunings. Um, and in our song Clumsy, uh, that one, was written in an open D tuning, which um, was showcased on a lot of that first album. And then uh, as far as like lyric writing for me, like I'd say my biggest influence is Taylor Swift, to be completely honest. She, uh, <laughs> you know, like she, she knows what she does well and she, mm-hmm. she has that pop music thing that she does where like, you know, you get, you get, you hear her songs, whether you like it or not, like they get stuck in your head. And that's really kind of what I want to do is I want to, I want to write those songs that get stuck in your head. And, and so um, those, those have been my biggest influences, you know, outside of the genre. I can definitely relate to the third eye blind. That's probably one of my favorite albums, especially for like a debut album to just front the cover just it's phenomenal like it's one of my favorite albums yeah it's it's been my number one album since since i've heard it like nothing's going to top that one for me right definitely respectable there i don't know about i don't know about um kyle but if it comes to just like straight songwriting i think my probably my biggest influence is elliot smith and that he's just pretty much everything that dude's ever released is just amazing but you can't listen to it for more than like two days straight because it's so gut-wrenching every single song even his happy album is still like figure eight it's still just there are some songs on there that are just soul crushing and i I feel like taking that um God, I don't even know. I don't want to have that energy where it's like, yeah, I want to hurt the other person on the other side listening to this, but to carry that energy where it's like, you're listening to this and this holds weight. What I'm saying holds weight is huge. So definitely Elliot Smith for me. Nice, nice. I'd say our biggest influences from like where maybe our sound comes from and like, um, you know, what where we get a lot of comparisons to uh i feel like we get we get mayday parade a lot um Mm. at times a a day to remember um and and those have definitely been um big influences on me as far as as emo goes like i i've always loved music with like really heavy vocal harmonies uh those you know those songs where you you had lyrics going back and forth between two vocalists Mm -hmm. you know which mayday parade did a lot when jason lancaster was still in the band and um you know, uh, also going back to, you know, the early Taking Back Sunday and brand new, like, you know, that, uh, that, that was just always something that, that hit with me where the, you know, the, the back and forth vocals, the harmonies, like, uh, I'm definitely a sucker for those. So um, I think that's where, you know, a lot of our sound was built off of. Um, but then we also have a, a drummer who um, likes metal and our bassist who is having trouble with this zoom call apparently yeah he can't uh, get in he says he needs a password but he definitely doesn't <laughs> but um yeah he you know he he's played in a uh a like funk fusion band uh here in columbus called pronto and you know they're you know so he's 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 all over the neck when he plays and isn't that typical like hey let's just uh follow the rhythm guitar bassist like he's he, he, he adds an element that um, 
you know, we don't we don't really see a whole lot in in pop punk. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, it's actually I always kind of laugh because I never actually listened to pop punk until pretty recently <laughs> before meeting this band. You know, big influences like love metal. When I play guitar, it's all metal. So I always kind of crack up at myself when we join a pop punk band and end up having like the most fun ever playing it. So I always love the energy that comes with the the pop punk. You know, even today, I hear a lot of bands getting into the heavier riffs and yeah, you know, the different tunings, and it works really well, I think. But you know, it's no secret with talking with you guys and listening to your first EP on Sunset, which is out right now, by the way, which you can get digitally. I think your band camp for like six dollars mm-hmm. and you know the subject of your music always touches on you know some things that you know some people may push down or push away rather than dealing with it what message or messages do you want to help bring to those who may be in the times of need whether they know it or not and what do you want them to get out of experiencing your music Who wants to take it? That's a really good question. I, I think a big part of, of what Cotter has been and what we've tried to convey, um, you know, in this band is that, you know, it's okay, you know, to, to have feelings and uh, to, to not, it's okay to not be okay sometimes. And, you know, like, I, I feel like there has been kind of like a big push lately to be open about, you know, our struggles with, with our own mental health where, you know, that used to be kind of a taboo subject. And, you know, I think people are finding support within one another, um, you know, to, to try and address those issues and not let them go, you know, let them not just let them go unnoticed and not be such a, a stigmatized thing. And so I think we try to tackle those issues because, you know, um, you know, I can say for myself personally that uh, music is, is been my outlet to kind of deal with those, uh, you know, even as recently as this week, like I, I finished a very, very important and introspective song about dealing with depression and anxiety um, but I didn't want it to be one of those songs where it's just sad all the way through. Uh, mm-hmm. and I think the thing that Cotter wants to do is, is relay a message of, of hope and positivity. And so in that song, you know, I, 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 I wanted to end it with a, with a bridge that talks about, you know, I'm not hopeless. I will be okay. And, and hopefully that, you know, as people listen to that music and maybe they, identify with you know some of the struggles that that we go through that they hear that message of positivity and about being okay and and maybe that will provide them that hope that you know we're we're trying to convey beautiful i love that anybody else got anything to add to that one that's pretty much pretty much where i i I stand Uh, a big thing for me is I hate the idea of of being a, a guy, honestly, being a guy, and it is expected almost mm-hmm. that we're not supposed to feel like we're you know the, the whole toxic masculinity thing. I think is awful. Um, I think you know there's a reason that a lot of males commit suicide because you can't talk about your feelings. You know, like it's, it's society expects you to not talk about your feelings. That's just not a thing. And that's huge for me. Me getting like getting away from that is is a big thing. But reminding people that, yeah, it's you're not alone. Mm-hmm. We'll get through this. We'll get there. You know, trying to be a voice for people. Yeah. So there are so many people out there that just feel their loss or there is no other hope and you know i love the fact that you guys are letting everybody know that you know you're not alone you know there is hope out there and we can find it in each other yeah absolutely as long as we stick with each other we'll be all right we'll get we'll get to it we'll get through it for sure now 
obviously touring is a big way to reach thousands of people and many who may be hearing you for the very first time will allow you to get your messages across. If you could construct the ultimate tour with bands you would love to tour with, who would be included and who would you include to do the most epic collaboration with? Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, wow. What a dream. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, I'll let, I'll let you guys take the floor. I already have an answer, but I'll let you guys I would love, I think it'd be amazing to tour someone like four years strong, part of my pop punk, like, uh, birth more or less they become one of my absolute favorite bands i love their music it's so catchy and original for the genre uh i would love to do something with them that would be my favorite yeah for me it would be either i would say taking back sunday or all american rejects would be my vote for me it would be a day to remember the ataris the wonder years microwave all four of them. Oh, microwave would be so I much saw fun. Microwave coming. Yeah, yeah, microwave for sure. Um, I'm I'm probably going to go with the obvious answer is 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 probably Mayday Parade. Um, I, I I like what they do. I like their message. You know, like I've connected with their music so hard. Um, you know, or even you know anything that Jason Lancaster has done with uh, you know Go Radio. Um, you know, like those kind of really focus in on that uh you know those feelings like you know every you know there's there's always that meme about you know uh you know are we gonna gonna just uh put on Mayday Parade's Miserable at Best and and, and cry for the next week and <laughs> you know like um you know I, I I've, I've had the opportunity to to actually meet some of those guys when they were on tour and they're just just nice dudes and you know like um you know, Jake, their drummer, has just been one of my favorite musicians to follow. And, like, watching him, like, release his own, like, uh, side project in Via Fiore, um, you know, getting to see him do lead vocals. Because I always thought he was a great vocalist, you know, doing, like, the backup vocals and the harmonies for Mayday. Like, um, so I, I'd, I'd, I'd love to work with, with, with those dudes. Like, they're, they're my favorites. I think the most fun band to play with out of all this, though, probably be a day to remember. The energy at those shows is oh wild and fantastic. Yeah. Uh, they're my, probably my favorite memories. That would be like a dream. Clap a song with them and just get some high energy. Ooh, yeah. We have some breakdowns in our songs. and uh, oh, What a dream. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Also, also anything that Ace Enders does, like that's kind of yeah, how... Yeah. That's, yeah. that's how Kyle or how Howard and I kind of started our friendship as we met in a bar, was talking about the early November and then we're like, Hey, you want to play music? So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Early November is honestly one of my favorite, like early emo bands that I remember getting into back with like this day and age armor for sleep. Uh, you know, just bands like that. Seosin. There you go. Yeah. Seosin's another good one for yeah. sure. I could definitely, I remember seeing a day to remember last year in uh, Atlantic City for Warp Tour and just the energy when they just unleash like the big inflatables or get everyone, you know, surfing on top of each other. Just uh, the confetti it. cannons. That's like a favorite yeah. moment of my life at Rock on the Range. I was like three rows back in the huge crowd and the, they dropped the, I fucking forget the song's name. Da, 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 da. Downfall of us all, I think. And when the drop hits, the confetti shoots, and it's yeah. just like, oh man, it was so close. It's like a fair moment of my life. Yeah, the, I, I could definitely see just all those bands that you all, you know, name there. Just put all them together, put you in there, call it done. Oh, that's a dream. <laughs> yeah, absolute dream. Now, your first EP on Sunset, which was released back on October 13th, was written, mixed, produced in a matter of a few months in the spring and summer of 2020. What was going yep. through your mind the whole time knowing that what you set up months prior to do was going to have these roadblocks along the way, you know, and just overall, what was the process like to do all this during 2020? It was kind of like something to do because we could not go do the shows, right? So we can use that time to sit and focus and write in the studio and it's definitely a major bummer i think probably the most fun thing is after you record that album you go play it right 
go to the people, do the shows, you know, have the EP release shows. So that was definitely a bummer, no we knew it going in. But, you know, being with the the boys in the studio and still jamming it out was really, really fun. And then just, I know Zach could probably talk about it, just having to really focus on an online presence because you can't go out there and, you know, push it to the people. Ethan is eternally struggling to get back in this in the chat. I'm, I'm still trying to help him. Hold on. Yeah, I think it kind of um, served as like the motivation for us to get the EP recorded and to get into the studio quicker um, because, you know, the lack of options Ethan says we really he didn't had, have. He needs, sorry to interrupt, but Ethan says he needs let in. He says he's here, yeah, right but he needs let in. There he is. Hey. Oh, my there goodness. We go. There we go. Welcome. And he's muted. Welcome. Of course. <laughs> yes. he is. Of course. Oh, my gosh. Welcome. Oh, boy. Welcome. Oh, beautiful. Mr. Squatch himself. Thank All you. All right. So, yeah. So, so to kind of go off that, um, uh, we had a lot of ambition for 2020 when we yeah. started. Cause we've only, we've, <laughs> we've only been a band for a year this month. That was when, uh, you know, we kind of put out for a guitarist on, uh, on Facebook and Kyle shows up, you know, already kind of knowing a little bit of a song that we had. I'm just like, Hey, yeah, uh, you want to do it? All right, let's do it. So, uh, we had this opportunity to play a show well before we, we thought we would be ready. Um, uh, a local band, uh, who is unfortunately now defunct here in Columbus, uh, heavy things. Um, you know, they offered us this opportunity to, to play with them, uh, and another uh, local band called Liberty D deep down. And we ended up playing our first show after being a band for a month, maybe five weeks. Yeah. Uh, maybe that. Had a, had a huge turnout played for about 200 people for our very first show and just felt really good going into uh into 2020 um you know then we uh we played another show at space bar with uh uh brave, the, brave, sea. brave the sea and uh i remember uh and and howard remembers this very clearly where uh you know just some person that we had never met came up to us yeah. like hey where can we hear your music and we're just like nowhere nowhere yet so we're just <laughs> like nowhere. okay so I'll like right back putting putting out some music is definitely going to be on the agenda and uh then covid happened and it's just like well i guess that's all we can do so you know when we went in our first lockdown um you know where we couldn't even get together to practice we were just uh recording on our computers and sending tracks back and forth to one another that really helped us prepare for uh, when we had the opportunity to go into weird music studios and and uh, and work with those guys and and we felt really confident uh, being able to you know take what we had worked on at home um, and had that chance to basically do our own self rehearsal so that way once we got into the studio we kind of had that that feeling of confidence and, and knew where we were going to go with it and were able to knock out five songs and three days you know aside from some a little extra uh vocal production that we uh we did over the course of you know trying to put that re release out so um we just really tried to take the time that we had and or the opportunities that we did have and, and make most of them you know we, i see a lot of bands that have just kind of quit doing anything since COVID happened and we're like well we can't play shows and we're a new band. So we got to go gotta down do without a fight. So, <laughs> That's right. so we're just trying, we've just been trying to build upon that, you know, get our music out to anybody who wants to listen and, you know, really try to engage with our fan base. You know, if someone, you know, gives us a follow or leaves us a comment or has anything to say about us, you know, we want to say, Hey, thank you. Like, cause you know, if people aren't listening to our music, if people aren't supporting, you know us and we're we're just a we're just a couple of dudes but uh playing music you, well that's you know, what we're that's what we'll always be we'll always be just some people playing music but we hope people appreciate it is what we're trying to say and hey maybe we'll have <laughs> two albums out before we have a third show exactly yeah. <laughs> honestly <laughs> no kidding hey we can dream yeah now we have just been absolutely jamming out the clumsy for 
nearly two months now since the lyric video was dropped, which anybody can find on your YouTube channel. What other exciting releases or events do you have going on that we should know about? So right now we're in kind of like a, uh, we're promoting the EP as hard as we can and we're working on new material. It's incredibly hard for us right now, given that I work in the service industry and that's uh, just to say it's a rocky road is a bit of an understatement. So we're not entirely sure what's going on there. Um, some of us have been unfortunately exposed to COVID, so we haven't really been meeting up. So we've been using this time recently to work on new material and we have at least four songs we have not recorded that we're working on. Um, and those of us who can meet up do, but right now it's kind of a lull period for us until we figure out what's going on with everyone and what, what the financial situation is going to be and so on and so forth. Yeah, especially um, with uh, just coordinating to get everyone together is already hard enough with uh, so many restrictions. But, I mean, over time, we'll, we'll be able to work past that. We, got, we just got to find a way to get through it. You know, there's just some hurdles being put in front of us right now. But soon enough make some progress. Maybe we have time to uh, get enough practice together and get another live stream together for people to appreciate. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I think we were talking about actually wanting to work on a new music video, which, uh, which would be a lot of fun all in house. So we all can just have some fun and edit it and um, show off a good time between what we like to do as a band together. So build some brotherhood. For sure. Definitely hope that, you know, just everything gets back to as normal as can be as soon as possible so that we can all stop losing our sanity. Uh, no kidding. <laughs> right. No kidding. Everyone's like, I'd love to go see a show. Like, I'd love to play a show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, we here at Squatch and Pet absolutely love the paranormal, unexplained, you know, aliens and everything in between. Yeah. Have you we, ever had your own squad sighting or any experience with the unexplained or paranormal? I'm questioning this right now, if this interview is real <laughs> or if I'm in some sort of simulation. I, you know what? Honestly, I have. I've had one before. I don't know about you guys. So you guys can go first, but I have. No, 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 Howard. Let's hear it. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in for it. I'm later. in for it. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna roast me if if I breathe in the wrong direction. That's fine. <laughs> um, so it was actually a few friends of mine who were like 18, 19 years old. Down by OU, there is a ghost town called Moonville, and there's not much left of Moonville except this giant. Um, it's like three stories tall. It's this massive train tunnel. It's beautiful. And so we went down there, like being like sweet. We're gonna go at witch's hour, or whatever. It'd be there at 3 a.m. And we were, and it was cold. It was really cold. It was like middle of December. We're in this tunnel, 3 a.m. rolls around, nothing happens. So we're like, all right, screw it. We leave it around 3.30. And before we left, because there's not much of the town left, like you can find cellars of old houses, but it's really, really old. They, they stopped, people stopped living there in the 30s. And um, so, you know, before we left, we're like, the, well, the cemetery's up the hill. So let's go ahead and give that a check and then let's get out of here. Now, it's up the hill, so you figure that higher elevation you go, it's going to get windier and it's going to get colder, which is normally how it goes. Uh, we walked into that cemetery, and I have two people that were with me that can confirm this. It was like walking into someone's house. Like, jackets came off, gloves came off, hats came off. It was just warm, inviting. It made absolutely no sense. But yeah, yeah, all of us, all of us took our jackets off and walking around in a t-shirt, and then when we left, because I have no experience with this whatsoever, but apparently if there is a spirit and that spirit welcomes you because they know you're not going to do anything, and that's what we, we were just there to appreciate it. We didn't vandalize anything. Um, they'll make something warmer, like you're, you are invited. So that was really weird, and oh, I shared weird. that experience. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was really cool. Really uh, cool. I have one, actually, believe it or not, but my mom lives in Kirtland, Ohio, which is like 25 minutes east of Cleveland. And they have, like, a lot of woods and such. And my mom uh, was kind of cruel <laughs> in a fun way. But she used to stop the car in the darkest areas of the woods and tell me about the melonhead people. 
and they were like what? the family of like this old crazy doctor and they had these big elongated melon heads and they would come out and kidnap people in the woods so she would stop the car make me get out and lock the door oh let's reiterate that i was like <laughs> between 12 and 14 <laughs> uh, i don't really fuck with words in the dark anymore <laughs> amazing i love that so i'm not a big paranormal guy but uh i don't fuck with melon heads uh, paranormal, I, I I don't have any experiences, but I love it. Like, go talk on to Bob Lazar and all of his stuff that he's come forward and shared from Area 51 and stuff, if you actually believe him. That's more of the, the question. Do you actually believe? And then I just love X-Files. So sci-fi is right up my route. I've been Wish playing a lot of Phasmophobia, personally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never had, personally, a paranormal experience, but I did have a group of friends um, probably – probably eight or nine years ago now that we uh, we put together a little ragtag paranormal team and had our, our voice recorders and we had a point and shoot thermometer and we went into a friend's house that said it was um, supposedly haunted and we stayed there overnight and did like the ghost hunters like lockdown thing and we didn't get any evidence. The only cool thing that happened was uh, one of our cameras turned off randomly at some point during the night um, and had a completely full battery and just but it just shut off at some point but like I said we didn't get any actual anything that we call evidence but we tried i think that's evidence enough right there it was yeah that was the only thing we got i was like we needed more than one thing to right. for it to, to call it something is what we were thinking but it was still a fun time yeah i used to uh my friends and i used to do that stuff in high school where we'd, we'd go around with the camera and just like go to there's like this old abandoned house that was like called like the mongoloid house or something i don't know what the what it was or it was just an abandoned house where whatever and we we'd go out there and try to you know shoot some material i think there was a, an abandoned school you know somewhere like uh somewhere northeast of marion and we went and just kind of climbed around there and you know tried to not get caught by the police um i'm i'm typically a skeptic when it comes to a lot of that stuff but like i like to like i'm a firm believer that there is life outside of of this planet and they want to they have no don't want to have anything to do with dude, us I'm, I'm, like, I'm with you about being a skeptic but like it, dude it was literally like walking into somebody's house it was yeah. the weird i'm still super skeptical but that was just oof. yeah i guess I the one experience skeptic. the experience that i did have was a uh, uh for my birthday uh last year it was in the middle of february you know a friend of mine we were just hanging out uh at her mom's house drinking bourbon uh, outside because her mom was inside to sleep and um, you know the, the snow's coming down she's got a fire pit she's trying to light a fire like I'm, she was at it for like 30 minutes like trying to scout a fire I'm just like uh, Leah I don't think this is gonna happen and then she's like just kind of like shouts into the darkness like can I get some help from you witchy bitches and then immediately like the fire just just starts <laughs> to go I'm just like uh, I, I saw that like I saw that happen and i it's, it's a thing that we talk about and we're just like, you know, there, there could be a number of explanations for why it finally caught and just lit up. But like, it was like literally the second she, she, she calls out to, you know, for help and then it just lights up and I'm just like, okay, yeah, I was here for that. I heard. I that. was here for that. <laughs> like I actually saw that. <laughs> That's awesome. Definitely love the stories, gentlemen. Now, where can everybody find Cotter online to grab the new EP, merch, watch videos, and just overall have a great time listening to your music? It's honestly, it's it's everywhere. Like, it's on Bandcamp, it's on Reverb Nation. We've got a website, CotterSucks.com. Um, you know, because that's kind of our handle on every everything except for Facebook because Facebook won't let us put the word sucks in our, uh, you know, in our, our name, even though we have it on Instagram, which is, you know, owned by Facebook. We should try um, Zuck. Cotter Zucks. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's on Spotify. It's on uh, Apple Google Music. Play. It's, you know, yeah, I, I mean, Google Play died, I guess, but, you know, they're, they're still yeah, YouTube music now. Who, Sorry. Who, who YouTube. still YouTube. swear by Google Play, um, you know, um, 
but cottersucks.com is our, uh, you know, is our official band website. You know, that's where you can go like read more bios about the band, about each of the individual members, you know, hear our music, hear the, uh, you know, uh, we've got some, some live video. We've got um, our music video that we shot for cigarettes and razor blades up there. Um, so anywhere that you can, that music exists, like we're, we're there on everything. So, um, but you know, our, our hub to, to kind of get to everything is cottersucks.com. And then we, we do have physical CDs available too. So if you are old school and you actually want that, that, that will be, well, is available technically. We got a vinyl coming whenever I can afford to throw down for, you know, to, to print a vinyl. Um, you know, I'm just trying to get some, uh, some feelers out there to, to see if that's going to be a, a worthwhile uh, investment while we don't have shows to play to actually sell merch. But, um, you know, the last batch of merch we got, we sold out in 48 hours during COVID lockdown. So, um, you know, I, I feel confident that, you know, we've got a, we've got a fan base that, that does like to support us and we're eternally appreciative of them. Yeah. 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 I feel if you, if you put out that vinyl, it'll sell and I'll, I'll grab it. All right, all right. Appreciate, appreciate that. So we very much appreciate that. Yeah, you're more than welcome. And again, want to thank you all here for joining us. Again, we have Cotter from Columbus, Ohio. Find them on cottersucks.com, although they don't. <laughs> but want to thank you all for joining us here, taking the time, sitting down, and having fun. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you for, yeah, having, thanks us. for having us. Thank hey, you, man. Squatchy. Thank you so much, man. Hey, you guys are more than welcome. Again, this is Squatch in the Pit. Squatch out. Uh, thank you guys again for joining in today. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you for having us. Yeah, man.